All right, here we go. This is a JD squared model three tube bender. And I go through how I use it in pretty good detail on one of my trike build videos, check that out. But basically what you do, so the bending action happens here, you put the tube in, and basically when you bend the tube, this arm moves and the tube bends. And the way you do that is these ratchets here, you put this in, and basically you just ratchet it forward. Just like that, until your tube's bent. Bending a really thick tube, that's a ton of work. And I ended up putting in a, a brace so that I could push against it, but it's still really, really hard. It's not any fun. And before I've used some hydraulic ones and it's, it's obviously much better. So I am going to convert this using an air to hydraulic cylinder. The one, like the one in my engine hoist, this guy here. And I couldn't find any locally in the past couple of weeks. There's no restock or whatever. So I'm gonna take this one off and mock everything up with it and eventually get a new one. Bender is mounted to the stand here, and I've been doing a little bit of brainstorming. I think um, this handle, the ratchet handle, was mounted here, but what I need is something that rotates here so I can mount the cylinder, and while it pushes on this, it needs to be able to rotate. So I think I'm gonna cut this off. This is the old tube um, where I would slide a handle and I could use it for leverage to bend tube. I think I'm gonna cut this off, turn it into a sleeve for this. I don't wanna modify any of the kind of factory parts in case I wanna put that other handle back on. So I'll make a sleeve for the sleeve, and then on the sleeve I can weld whatever's gonna hold the cylinder so that it can pivot. And what I'm thinking for the cylinder is I have this extra tube that I used in my wood stove build. Uh, check that video out also. But anyway, I have this piece of tube and it slides over the tube really well. And what I need is something I can weld up further on the cylinder and hold the cylinder that provides extra support. And this just happens to be perfect. So I think I can cut it down the cylinders only like here, weld that other piece here so it can pivot and I'll need to brace it. And then down at this end, I have this ridiculous piece of old square tube, no idea what it's from, but I think I can turn it into a piece that I weld on the bottom and then it sticks up and has some tabs that come up or whatever and I can run a bolt through and that'll support that load because this is going to want to go this way when that goes that way obviously. But the first thing I got to do is cut this guy off and then turn the inside. It's just barely too small for this sleeve to fit. So I'll turn it to length and I'll turn the diameter appropriately that this will be a sleeve for the sleeve. <laughs> Just like that. The sleeve of the sleeve is a hair long so it can flip. And we got a good fit. Tube too long, not good.
Much better. With a little notchy around there. So it's nice now. The sleeve is done. Nice snug fit on the bolt. Nice snug fit in the cylinder. All right, so here's where I'm at with the bender. I made my sleeves, big sleeve there. Small sleeve goes through here. And actually, I kind of knew where I wanted the tube. So I just tack welded the big sleeve to the tube, test fit it once, and then went for it. I just welded it on there and fit it up. And now we're going to see if it works. So in the future, I'm going to need something to brace this because it's going to want to leave but i can hold it for now since i'm not actually bending anything but i got the air hooked up um, it's important to remember one thing to note this guy needs to be downward so the outside of the inside of the cylinder is the reservoir for fluid and if this guy isn't down that fluid won't be able to get in there to be pumped into the cylinder so this guy had to be down to get the fluid down to it if i'm going to use the air and that was important just because I cut a notch in this tube so that it would fit nice over there. And now, let's see if, uh, if this works. If you want it to work, you gotta close the valve. All right, that works. We have an excellent range of motion. Uh, nothing catastrophic happened, which is good. So now I can loosen the valve and just pull the cylinder back into position. I really I nailed it with the tube length. Um, one thing with the geometry that's really important, I wanted to make sure I can get this arm fully retracted into here because if I need to use a really big die and go in that hole, you can't really start a tube without this thing all the way closed. So usually you use like hole three, four, five, six, and the arm will be out another half inch or something, which is fine. But just in the event, I want to bend some two and a half inch or something crazy someday. Really want to make sure this guy could go all the way in. So that's kind of how I picked the position. But at least for now, that looks like it'll work. So I'm going to make a brace to go from here to here to strengthen that joint a little. And then really what I got to work on is something that goes here, that a bolt goes through to hold this, and then I weld to the tube. So I'm thinking that big piece of old square tube I have, I'm going to run off this way and then run some tabs off. But it'll need to be removable so that I can unbolt whatever this is bolted to and pull the cylinder out if I need to. Been a minute since I stopped to film anything here, but I did. I've been doing a bunch of work. It's actually a new day, which was a a good thing because I had some time to stop and kind of think. So I was initially gonna put this piece like this way and get some additional weld area on this, and then make some tabs that went like this around this guy. But I changed my mind after uh, doing a little bit of research online of what some other people were doing. And I'm gonna put this guy like this. And then I made another tab like this. It will go in between and it will actually bolt to the piece that's welded here. So those two tabs will look like this and they will end up like this together with the two tabs bolted together where the clamp is and then one bolt through the end of the cylinder. All right, so I'm gonna tack weld one last check and then burn all this in.
All right, I changed my mind. I need to drill holes for these two mate, and I don't want to do it after it's welded to that thing. All right, camera. All right, one last test fit. And a mark. Yep, now I can tack it, and then I'll drill this hole through here. Make sure everything bolts up, and then I can weld it all. All right, that's tacked, that's sturdy. Sweet. That fits. Well, I apparently do not have a 5 8 drill bit, so I am, against my better judgment, going to plunge an end mill. Here we go. And would you look at that, it all bolts together. All right, I can finish well top and bottom, and uh, she's done. Yum, 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 that is fine. Looks pretty okay to me. All right, I am ready to test this thing out. I got my bolts in and tightened down. I got my air hooked up and I got my first tube set up. So first let's take a look at how this thing even works. So how these bitters work is there's kind of two dies. This part of the die here is stationary. It's locked in up here with this big pin. This part of the die rotates. So the center of the die is locked in place by this big pin. And then when this arm here comes towards me, it takes this pin that goes through the die and spins it. And then the tube is locked to the die with this little kind of horseshoe bracket and then you tighten this bolt up to clamp everything together. So to know how much you've bent, uh, they come with these little angle finders and what you use is a piece of welding rod that bolts to the die itself and as the die moves, obviously this will move. And then you want to remember when you're done bending to let the pressure off because it'll relieve a little bit. So if you bend it to 93 and let it go, it'll come back to 90 or probably 91 and a half and it'll come back to 90. And what is really great about this I have 10 foot of tube, but sometimes you have 20 or even more foot of tube. You can see it sticking all the way out there. Well, this thing, when it is bolted to the floor, that tube can only go where it's pointed, where the tube bender is pointed. So you gotta bolt it in a goofy spot sometimes, and then when you, when you bend it, this piece could also be 10 feet long. So you need all kinds of room. Well, this thing on wheels now, I can just move this wherever I want. Move that tube where I need it, move the other end where I need it, and maybe when I'm halfway through bending, I need to move it. It's gonna be really nice. So to set this up, you wanna put the tiniest bit of tension on this, so I just pulled, I just yanked this towards me so that there's some tension. And then, look at this guy. Make sure it is right over the zero. And now I can use my hydraulic cylinder to do my very first bend. And I'm actually gonna bend this guy to 180 degrees. It's gonna be part of the tail, the subframe for the seat for this guy. Uh, there's videos on this guy, check those out. All right, here we go. Now it's reset and we can keep going. There you go, bent some 7 8 tubing, it's thin wall stuff, bent like a dream.
And that is gonna be the back portion of the seat for this bad boy. But that's it, successful bender conversion. Thanks for watching. Thank you.